Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. Welcome to my sewing space. If you've been following me for a while, you know that my book, A Year in Solids, came out earlier this year, and we're working our way through the book with a quilt along every single month until we make all 12 quilts. This month, we're on the October quilt. This week, we're working on a part that could be a little bit tricky, so I wanted to make a video so that it had a permanent home, and you could refer to this now when you're making it, or if you're making this quilt down the line. This week, we're working on these quarter churned ashes and these half churned ashes. So let me walk you through how to do those. One thing I, al I also wanted to make you aware of are there are two small errors in the October pattern. First this instruction says cut strip six two and a half inch by width of fabric strips for the strip sets. It's also repeated down here. You only need to do this once so just go ahead and cross out one of those. The second error has to do with the portion that we're doing this week. Now, fortunately, the cutting instructions are correct. The yardage requirements are correct. So it's really, if you already moved ahead and started to follow the directions and they're not working out for you, you just have to seam rip a few things. But let's let's talk about what it is. So for these, for these half churn dash and the quarter churn dashes. We use these units in the corner in place of a half square triangle because we're effectively, it's a half square triangle cut in half. So we're making this. However, the book says to make 28 of these units here. What we actually need to do is we need to make 14 this way and 14 a mirror image of that first way. So if you already pieced all 28 like this, which is what I did, because I didn't realize the mistake until I went ahead to the next, you just take 14 of them and seam rip them and then piece them in a mirror image of this first way. I'm also making a note of this error on my blog so that you could refer to that whenever you need to too. It'll be typed out and you can see how it looks in case you want to see a written version. Let's go ahead and make the blocks. We're gonna start with this half churn dash. I have all the units that we need for this block ready and here here they are but I just want to show you. So first this is the part where the mistake is that I was talking about. The book says to piece 28 of these triangle units and I went ahead and did that and then when I went to move further into the block I realized that I have a mistake. So if you did this you'll take 14 of the ones you already pieced and you'll just seam rip these apart and then we're going to sew them in a mirror image of the one that's on my sewing machine. So let me pull these apart. Okay. Here is the one block and to make a mirror image of that means that we just need to go ahead and reverse the pieces. So this is the one I'm going to go ahead and sew right now. This is going to turn out to be a mirror image of the one that's listed in the book. So now we have these two pieces and they are mirror images of, of each other and that's what we need to make this half churn dash block. Let's go ahead and start. I like to work with these in rows because they could be a little bit confusing if you've never pieced blocks like, um, you know, half blocks like this. So we're gonna start with our half square triangle in the bottom left, and we're gonna sew to it our strip piece. So I'm gonna match those up. You could pin if you like. And sew that together. Now, the next step is to take the one we just made, which is the mirror image of the one in the book, I'm gonna push my seam allowance over and I'm gonna trim this corner. And that is gonna get sewn right there. So let me match those that up and sew it. Okay. Now immediately I'm just going to flip it over and trim this excess here. Okay, and this is the bottom of our piece then. Now we're going to make the next row which is the middle row and the middle row uses a strip piece 
and a triangle. I'm gonna lay those next to each other and I'm gonna sew right here down this portion. I'm going to flip that over and trim this overhang. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the strip piece next to the half square triangle and I'm going to sew this line right here. For these blocks, I'm pushing the seam allowance toward the strip piece units, but you can, I think that seams are very much a personal preference. Some people like them nesting, some people like them open, um, some people can get very particular about seams and others might not. So just, you do what works best for you. Okay, after I've sewn that together, I now have this piece which is almost complete. We just need one more unit on the top here. To do that, I'm gonna turn the block. I'm gonna get the other piece. I'm gonna push the seam allowance to one side and just trim this overhang. Okay. And then what we're going to do is sew it on like this. So let me do that. And there we have the half churn dash unit. Now actually for this quilt, all of the churn dash units are framed. So the half units get framed also. What we're gonna do before we frame it is I like to press at this step. Here we have our block and I did not press mm -hmm. as I made this. So we're gonna go ahead and press it now for the first time. When I do that, I start from the back and I pay attention to the way that I sew the seams together. So let me get my iron here. And I'm just gonna set it on these seams. I push my seams to one side, but when you're pressing after not having pressed at any step, what you need to make sure is that your seams are laying nice and flat uh, and in the right direction and that they are actually let me show you. This seam is fully extended, which means that it's laying exactly how it's supposed to lay. Sometimes if you don't press along the way and you're not paying attention to that, you can press your seam so that it's like, it's like folded over a little bit like this and there's room in here. So when I say you need to make sure your seams are fully open and extended, what I mean is that you need to make sure before you press is that it's actually all the way flush against the thread how it's supposed to be. Because if you're not pressing along the way, that is something that can happen. So I made sure these seams are exactly fully extended how they should be. Now I'm not pulling or tugging on these because these are triangles and they could work very, very easily just with mishandling and the heat of the iron. So I'm pressing, but I'm being really careful about what I do. Now I press this bottom row and it's perfect. And what I want to do now to press the other rows, I'm going to flip it forward and I'm going to fold it. For this, I'm going to make sure the seam here is meeting up with this seam here. Now I'm doing this with my fingers from the back side. You can feel the difference whether they're overlapped or whether they're right next to each other where they should be. When they're right next to each other where they should be, I'm going to set the seams like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and gently just open this up from the front. My seams are still getting pushed to the side. I just open this seam on the front side and I'm pressing from here. Now these two rows are fully pressed and perfect. Last row is this top one for my cat's tails here. I'm going to do this the same way I did the middle row. I'm going to feel with my fingers, make sure everything's laying where it should be, set the seam, and then I'm going to gently from the front push the seam to the direction I want it to go, and then press. Okay. 
Now this, this block, this half churned ash is fully pressed and ready to have the frame added to it. I'm gonna trim these two with scissors before we begin and then we'll add the, the frame. I'm ready to trim this now. Just gonna go right flat up. You can do it from the back or the front. Just trim that overhang off. Now to add the frame portion of this block, we're going to add a strip along the bottom here and a strip along the left side. Let's start with the bottom strip. You're going to have this overhang here and that's okay. We're going to trim that off later. So I just finger press that open and then we're gonna add the one to the other side. And I actually prefer to work from the back for this because I'm gonna match my two flat edges together rather than this point where we're gonna have overhang. So I'm gonna work from the back. And I'm gonna sew here. same as the other side we're gonna have this extra overhang here now that's exactly right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this and then we're gonna trim since we just pressed the block the block really well we're just working on pressing these strips I put them I finger press them in the correct position and then I just hold them still and go over them with the iron and I'm not really sliding at all. This is an up and down pressing motion. So this, this side is pressed. Now we're going to work on this other side, which will be the same thing. I'm going to finger press this exactly how I want it to go. And then I'm just gonna set my iron on top of it and then just let it press it into place. Okay, we've pressed it. The last step is to trim. So here I have my block laid out. I'm making sure this bottom is in line with one of the marks on my ruler and so is the left side also. I'm going to take a long ruler and lay it across so that it is in line with this portion and I'm going to trim off this extra fabric. So here I have the ruler placed exactly how it's meant to be. It's in line with the block and the extra is hanging off at each edge. So then you just take your rotary cutter and trim that excess away. Here I'm at the top edge and I'm just going to glide along the roller and take this off. I've moved down to the bottom edge and I'm going to repeat the process right here. And now we're left with our perfect framed half churn dash block. These will be the blocks that we use to set the quilt. Now we're going to make the churn dash unit and turn it into the frame churn dash unit. Let's make one. I have my strip laid out. The next step is to sew this corner piece to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm going to repeat the same step on the other side. I'm going to sew here. Now that we have this piece, we're going to close it up and trim these overhangs. One. Now I'm going to take the piece and I'm going to fold it in half 
and I'm going to crease here really good with my finger. It's going to leave a mark. And that's so that we can match the next portion up correctly. I have a triangle and I'm going to repeat the process to there. Crease this really good here at this bottom. When I get a mark, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to match the two creases up. Lay it down. And then I'm going to sew across the top here. This is our quarter churn dash unit. We're going to add a strip along the bottom to make it the framed unit. So what we're going to do is flip it over. And then on the white portion, we're going to crease that just like we did before. So I'm creasing here to make a mark. I get my long strip and I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to make a crease in the middle here just like I did before. Now this strip's kind of a lot longer than the piece. So when I match these two up, it's okay if you want to stick a pin in that there, help hold it in place. Okay. I'm going to make sure that my seams are the way I want them to be. And I'm going to backtrack here. And now I'm going to sew. And remember, you're going to have extra here, and you're going to have extra on this other end. That's okay. That's supposed to be like that. We're going to trim that away later. So here is our framed unit. We're going to press it and we're going to trim it. Here I have the block and I'm actually going to press this from the front. So I'm going to take a few seconds here to get these seams laying how I want them to lay. And with this piece folded down, I'm going to go ahead and just set the iron on top. That's going to set the middle seams. And then we're going to gently lift this without distorting it and press. Then we're going to flip the block around and work on this framed portion. So first I'm going to press it in place and set the seams. And then I'm going to gently open it and just hold it where I want it to be. And we're going to press along that. So let's see. There we go. Okay, so our framed block is done, and now we're going to trim this extra away. So now, just as we did before with the half churn dash block, when we are trimming the frame, we're going to trim the frame for this quarter block also. I have it laid up so that my block is along the lines of my cutting mat, and I'm going to take my ruler and just lay it on top. I've gone ahead and I've laid my ruler on top here. It's in line with the black line of my cutting mat, and I'm going to trim this extra. And I trim, I trim that excess away. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. This is the portion we just trimmed, and I've gone and I've laid my roller across the top, and now we're going to trim there. Now here is our framed quarter churn dash block. So this week's assignment is to make all of the framed half churn dash blocks that we need, and all of the framed quarter turn dash blocks that we need. I hope this video helped and I hope to answer any questions you might have in construction of these blocks. So that's how you make these blocks. Again, this is the half turn dash block that's framed and this is the framed quarter turn dash block. These are going to be used as our setting triangles in the quilt and these are going to be used as our corner triangles in the quilt. I hope I answered any questions you might have had in the construction of these blocks, but if you have further questions, just leave it in the comments below and I'll answer them. Thank you. Until next time.